Welcome to our newest exhibition at the Peoria Art Guild, Peter A. Hart's Con React to Contact. This is a large body of work that um, has metamorphosed itself in many ways, and we'll get into that. But he is an abstract painter that has dedicated his life to color, and you're going to find in, our, in the gallery this month, we, it is filled with color. Um, Peter, why don't you introduce yourself just a little bit, and then we'll continue. Uh, Peter Ahart, I graduated from Bradley in 2020, I had a COVID, um, Army medic, and I teach medical classes down in Springfield, and I'm an abstract mixed media painter. And all of these works um, are on cardboard mounted onto canvas. And I think what people need to do, and really it's one of those experiences you have to be in person because they are so rich with texture and with color and with words and all of that stuff. How do you start and how did this body of work actually start? So this body of work uh, actually started with my MA uh, at Bradley. I wanted to go big, but I didn't want to spend a, a lot of money on canvas. So I was looking at what, what could I use, and cardboard is everywhere, and then I started thinking about homeless veterans, and that's what they use, that's the only barrier they have, that's their home. So it kind of, it, it started correlating for me, and at the same time, I read an article of a veteran that committed suicide waiting for the mental health facility to open in St. Louis. So they all kind of connected. Mm -hmm. So the MA, and then afterwards, I just keep on, I just kept on reusing, reusing, tearing things up, reattaching, stapling, tearing it back yeah. up, and reusing. Well, the and cycle your here. installation at Hoyser Art Center on Bradley's campus, the, the the walls were about ten feet up, twelve feet up, covered with cardboard. So it just is so great because I remember that, but I also know that I recognize parts of it that have continued to, you know, more. Um, to morph into to different things. This is particularly a really favorite one of mine, and I think part of it is your strong sense of, of design and energy. This great green um, mark that you have here really brings this up, cuts up, but then we go right down here. So many of your pieces, now they're all vertical, there's only one that's a horizontal, but they do remind me of some kind of abstract landscape. Mm -hmm. Do you have that as part of your inspiration? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I first joined the Army, I jumped out of airplanes, and being young, 18-year-old, that visual stimuli and physical stimuli, when I started painting, like that's how I started developing paintings, as abstractly, mm -hmm. where landscape-esque and they, it just keeps on going like I, I re-enter it like every time I uh, tear it up and reattach it and develop it more like it still has that kind of imagery for me and that physicality yeah. of well and these are I very do. physical energized um, matrices that we're using here um, and we're going to look here at these two uh, Jeff and I when we pulled them out um, it was just like oh wow these two look so great together and there's so much going on to them one of the things you do a lot of collage work sometimes with just pieces from magazines and stuff but then you also stencil and you have these stencils with uh, letters and numbers to it what is that what significance is that so it's actually a, a quick transfer uh, not, I don't, I don't stencil it. Uh, I do, I print off the words and then I glue it on there and rub the paper off. And I wanted to include language that was specific to military mm -hmm. groups, veterans, family members. So a lot, there, there are sayings that we use, like IGY6 is I got your six. They're uh, the mark is about n choosing not to uh, end your life. Mm -hmm. So a lot, uh, all of these works deal with the trauma of war, trauma in general, uh, mental health, mm -hmm. and transition. Which is a issues. great problem um, with not only all of our society, it seems, right, right now in the 21st century, but also particularly among veterans and homeless veterans are at the top of the, the concern list, I should say. And again, 
like this one, you have some pages torn out. I just love though how sometimes you will collage in, which gives it an extra um, layer. There's depth, so much depth to it that you have to get on and really explain. And I love the fact that with the corrugated cardboard, you, you use it and it's materialistic um, features so that it's got these wonderful lines that are going um, through the work and kind of unify, unify um, the, the painting itself. And down here we have, these are again, and again, a lot of the transfers are on here. Um, this isn't one, I, I forget, what what is that portion there? Do you remember? So here is, the VA did a study uh, a few years ago and they concluded that about 22 veterans commit suicide every day. This is a graphic, 22 is too many. And it really like hit home when I started doing research into it. We lost just over 7,000 in active combat between Iraq and Afghanistan in 20 years. The same time frame, we lost over 160,000 veterans or service members due to suicide. And once I start comparing these numbers, uh, yeah, it's a little overwhelming. Probably really is. that this is what I need. Like, mm -hmm. I need to share this information. And I choose to do it abstractly, so I think it allows more people to approach the painting, and then these details start emerging yep. slowly. Well, and I think, too, that there's certain mark making that you do. A lot of very strong, energized, um, evocative kind of brush strokes that give you these wonderful signals and directions um, for the viewer. And this one in particular, you see that. I also remember the earlier painting that these were there, but it was not mm -hmm. balanced in this way. It was totally different. And I mean, you can really see that you've torn and, and I don't think people can understand, but this is like a quarter of an inch um, that separates and, and elevates itself from the surface of the other um, campus and, and that's actually it's a uh, military uniform. Oh, is it? Yeah, uh, you can see the camouflage right here. Yeah, there you go. And uh, down here too, I expose it a little bit more. And that word, how do you decide what you're going to use, or is it just kind of you grab something and you think it's, I'm going to use it's it? Very experiential for me, mm -hmm. uh, just like the title, and that's why I chose the title. Mm -hmm. React to contact one. It's an infantry battle drill. Yeah. So it's the first thing we learn. But two, that's how I approach my painting. I do something and then I just react to what's happening. I stop thinking and, and I just see what comes up. Sometimes it doesn't work out and then I tear it up and, and go at it again. But I, I want it to be a very visceral experience for me. If I'm having this visceral experience, uh, my goal is to have the viewer have that mm -hmm. experience. And I think it's true. And I love, this is almost poetic, the war within, that this is something that is um, in a couple of different um, works you have. And then again, doing the transfer with the imagery that um, refers to the military background is, is just incredible. I think the other thing is that um, de Kooning made a lot, of, especially as he got older, made more abstract works. Um, but he, um, and he did not, tear and collage quite like you did. He did do that. But I just think it's just incredible how you have come up with your own kind of language and, and mark making that seems to repeat itself. Just simple little, like these lines that are parallel to each other. And they can go any, any way and we can see them go any way in other works. And um, then I also see like you have right here some music. Um, do you just have magazines and books just hanging around your studio and you just start to go or do you seek out what you're going to collage into the works? Uh, both. Uh, I find stuff and then it got to the point where people just start dropping things off. And there's actually, uh, I went to their store while I still lived here and inside of a radio, army radio communication like guide <laughs> from Vietnam, <laughs> was military orders, which I took a piece of and translated it into the painting. But each, th uh, so the, the song's actually native land. Oh. So I'm very specific yes. of what I'm using inside of the piece. But I just collect things and then we have boxes and 
and again, everything's game for yeah. me. And here, here we experience the raw um, cardboard, but you've got the lines going um, vertically instead of horizontally. And I just, I love that texture. I just want to feel all over it. And really, I mean, it's all about, like you said, it's the contact and stuff like that. In this one, it's wonderful. Um, you can't help but notice you have, it's almost unblemished, this little image of two figures there. And the rest is then very, very energized. Um, why did that, why did you keep that one so pristine? So this one was happening during COVID and all the civil unrest. Yeah. So we'll say. Uh, and this image is from a uh, a Civil War book I have mm -hmm. uh, about the war, and I I thought it was uh, fitting. Um, and then I added that in quote there. The quote in there too. So a lot of time, I also like, I have no idea of this mathematics. Um. <laughs> like I'm just trying to grapple with the, the what's happening around me in the military, but also culturally, and how to come to terms mm -hmm. with it. And it is, it's, it's a large, huge bur burden to bear, but it's one that we really do need to recognize and to to um, really let people understand just how tragic it is. Um, these two are really great. They have a lot of the same, the orange there and the orange. How do you choose your palette? I mean, I, obviously you have a lot of paint in your studio, but does it, is your intention to use as many colors as you can or does sometimes it just warrants like orange? <laughs> uh, so all, 99.9% .9 of all the material is either found or from Lowe's. Mm -hmm. So most of the paint here is mist tint paints. And you know, when I get on, get very, very specific with a, a tone or tint, then I add in uh, artist grade acrylics. But uh, it, it's again, like I put it up there and then I react to what other colors are happening mm -hmm. around it. Oh, okay, this, this, is, this is too much of this thing. Mm -hmm. Let's well, add something on top of it. And that. like this area in here, it's almost like a, an eroded wall, something like that you would have seen in some foreign country where they papered over something and then they put more paper over and then it's been ripped off. And there's so much history to, to those layers. And I think that's what also makes them very curious and that we have to examine them up close and everything. Now this piece is one of the the small one of the smallest pieces here, and it is a vertical, horizontal as opposed to the vertical. Um, I love though the different elements that you put in here, even some gold paper. <laughs> I, where did you get that? Is it? Uh, I try not to throw anything uh, away. A lot of the material, like I just, we have so much waste. Mm -hmm. so I just collect the waste. Like oh, you know, I want to save that, and let's not. I have an 11 year old and a six year old, so when they bring stuff home from school, I go through it and then I keep it. <laughs> and then if I'm looking for something, I just keep on looking through all my material. I'm like, okay, this would work for that. Because I, I never know. And this is a COVID piece. This is a, a COVID piece. Mm -hmm. And I love we have the pandemics here, but we also have past, hoping that it is in our past. And I love your question here that you've incorporated what will it ever end? And I think that that's, that's probably a question that's on most of our minds continuously with um, the different strains and how things and just I, keep going. I had the polio vaccine information, <laughs> so I put that in there. And then this looks like the COVID imagery. Oh, but it's it actually my oldest son's pillowcase from when he was younger. I just kept on re-sewing <laughs> it and I, I, I just kept it. So just try to use what's mm -hmm. around me. And what is this transfer? <coughs> the, is this the 22? This is 22, yeah. Okay. Terrific. Most of the imagery you see in here has, uh, is related to veteran suicide or combat mm -hmm. wars in general. There's a picture of Hitler and Hitler Youth over there that uh, uh, I thought related very well to what was happening yep. a few years ago. And sometimes it's interesting, we, Jeff and I found different um, elements that like 
the, the dot at the paper here that has the dots on it. And then we have this wonderful piece here. And so they kind of related, even though this canvas became a lot more dark as, as the hues became darkened, let's say. And there, they're very brightened. Um, and I think it really does. And again, we have the war and you can finish it yourself if you've gone through his, his work a lot because you've become very familiar with the phrases that you've used over and over again. And again, right here in the middle, just this wonderful way that we've got the actual cardboard and you see this, the, the, really the material itself and how it's, it's natural, but then you bring all these wonderful intense colors over it. And I think it, it gives us a, a greater feeling of, of abstraction through the use of color and also texture that sometimes you don't get, especially if it's just a single piece of canvas that you're just painting on. You can make the, the paint thicker and it does give it somewhat of a, a texture, but I think using the found objects and the common um, paper and common cardboard um, really gives it a great history, it really does. This is just really intense right here, wonderful little, almost like landscape thing going on. And for me, I I started questioning where our material comes from. Mm -hmm. you know, do we really need to get it from an art store? Yeah. And what can I use around it? And around it at the same time, I experienced Mark Bradford's show in Chicago. Yes. So that was and for those that don't know, Mark Bradford um, is one of the hottest <laughs> American artists in actually in the world. And he started by, his um, mother had a beauty shop and the end papers to rolling the hair, especially black people's hair, just were discarded on the floor. And he would every day sweep them up and then he thought, I can use these. And they are covered and they're beautiful. We had a piece of his at the um, River Peoria Riverfront Museum and it was an outstanding piece. And this is the same idea and I think it's really admirable, but it's also so, it gives it a little bit more guts, shall we say, to the painting and to the work because there's the backstory of the materials that you're using are meant to be discarded, are meant to um, not be so precious as like linen would be. And I think it works really well. These last two pieces, this one is just, is one that you've done the least amount of painting over the cardboard <laughs> of any of them. And so we have a lot of texture here, a whole lot of texture. And then this one has this wonderful scene that is pretty horrific, but at the same time, you put it in orange and you've, you've drawn attention to it. We have these figures here where you've painted over their heads. Uh, it just, and instead of a, a bright sun, we have this dark kind of sun hold, hanging over the whole um, scene that we have here. And again, you're, I love this. this. This gesture seems to come very naturally <laughs> to you because we have it all over the place and it, it really does tie everything together and makes it a very strong work. Well, this exhibit's going to be up for the next month, the entire month. Um, I hope that you will bring people over to see it. It's just, it's once you get here, you will see it's so colorful and so engaging. And we thank you very much. And we hope that um, people will come and see both the video and the gallery. Thank you. Thanks, Peter.